what is an electrical transformer? Now, an electrical transformer is a device that is used to change voltage. And you can step voltage either up or down. Now, what a transformer will not do is it will not change the available current that you have in your circuit. It will also not change the frequency. So you can't put 50 hertz in and expect 60 hertz out of a transformer. That would be a completely different piece of equipment that you need for that. Now, the other thing to remember about transformers, they only work on AC, or alternating current. I'll explain why in a little bit here. Now, how does it work? Well, to explain how a transformer works, I've got to explain to you a couple of the basics of electricity and magnetism and how the two interact. First of all, when you pass electrical current through a conductor, it develops a magnetic field around the conductor. Now, we can easily illustrate this with this here, where I've wound a string of wire here around this steel bar. Now, you can't really see a magnetic field because it's invisible, but what we can do is illustrate it pretty easily here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sprinkle some iron filings down here onto the paper. So that's just iron shavings out there from the shop. And then I'm going to place my electromagnet back over the top of these filings. You can see there nothing really happens. So when I take this battery and I pass current through the coil, like that, you can actually see the filings will arrange themselves into a circular shape around the coil there. Like that. So you can see that a magnetic field forms around the coil as well as around the, the steel bar here. The magnet, magnetic field actually gets transferred and magnetizes the entire bar. Now the second concept that comes into play with a transformer happens when you have a conductor and you expose this conductor to an electromagnetic field from an external source, such as a permanent magnet or another electromagnet. Now, when you have a stationary magnetic field over a conductor, nothing will happen. It'll just, it'll just sit there. But when you vary that magnetic field or pulse it in and out, there will be an induced current on the conductor. So the other phenomenon that occurs is when you run a magnet over a conductor and change the magnetic field, you actually can induce current into the conductor. Now, I've got a co my coil of wire here from earlier, and I've got a uh, hard drive magnet here. And if you can see, if I set the magnet onto the, uh, onto the coil and just have a static magnetic field, uh, nothing happens there pretty much. However, if I vary the magnetic field by smooth scooting the magnet up and down over the coil so that the coil or the uh, magnetic field is sweeping back and forth across the coil. If you watch the screen, you can actually see that we, uh, we're actually creating some electricity here with this. You can see the spikes there. So a transformer works by putting these two principles together. So you have a primary coil and a secondary coil inside of a transformer. And what you do is you pass current AC current through the primary, and as that current flows through that coil, it creates a magnetic field. Now that magnetic field overlaps onto the secondary coil of wire and induces a current into that. Now the change in voltage is a result of the number of turns or the ratio of the turns between the primary and the secondary. So if you had a transformer like this with two coils of wire, and each coil had 10 turns of wire, the voltage you put in would equal the voltage you put out. However, if you had a voltage or a transformer where you had 20 turns of wire on the primary and 10 turns of wire on the secondary, the voltage on the output would be half of what you put into it. In addition to the two coils of wire present in a transformer, you also usually have what's called a core. Now this is a uh, ferrous material that is good at conducting electromagnetic fields, and its purpose is to help concentrate the magnetic field being created on the primary side of the transformer so that it gets the most possible effort put into the secondary. If you had just two coils of wire sitting in open air next to each other, there would be some interaction, but a lot of it would get lost. With that core in there, it kind of concentrates it all into one area. Now remember I talked about how the, the voltage on the output is determined by the ratio of turns? Well, a 
lot of transformers you can buy, especially in the industrial market, will have more than one voltage available at the output. These little outputs are called taps. Now what they are is on the secondary coil of wire, they wind it around and around, and then every once in a while they'll bring the wire out and then go back into the coil. That point right there is, is a voltage tap. So there will be, say, I don't know, 20 turns of wire and then a tap, and then another 10 turns and a tap, and then another 10 turns and a tap, and that allows you to have 20, 30, or 40 turns on the secondary, thus adjusting your voltage up or down, usually used to compensate for a sagging input voltage. So if it's meant for 120 in, you have, you know, 110, you can use the taps to push the output voltage up ever so slightly. If you have any other questions about how a transformer works, or if you'd like to order a transformer for your application, go ahead and give us a call. It's area code 510-403-4061, or our website is www.temcoindustrialpower.com, and you can find links to the products down here in the description. Also, we now have a Facebook page, and I'd love it if you'd go there and like and comment and subscribe both to our YouTube channel and to our Facebook. And uh, if you have any other questions, whether they're related to transformers or something else, go ahead and give us a shout out on there and uh, we'd be happy to answer your questions. I might even do a video where your response.